Welcome, Welcome to, to Unhinged Magi! <laughs> Alright, we've got a great topic today. It's a favorite topic. It is. The best deck ever. Favorite deck. Favorite, favorite deck magic. ever. Yes. Yep. Favorite magic deck ever. So I'm sure all of you guys that are watching this, if you're magic players, you probably have that one deck in the back of your mind that you think of and think, oh, I loved playing that. Like when, when the meta was just right, and these certain cards were allowed, and I got to play this deck. Like, just you think about maybe like the way it worked in the tournament, and it just holds that special place in your mind, that special place in your heart. Yep, it is. Yeah, do you have a deck like that? I do. It was actually one of my original tournament decks. It's really good. I had Demonic Tutor, and it was fantastic, but Control Magic was so fantastic. Mm. And I always had Steel Artifact as my sideboard. I had two counter spells. Mm -hmm. It was so good. And I had Power Sync. I had two Phantasm uh, Psychic Venoms inside the deck. And my Mana Shorts. Mm. My Mana Shorts, everything was kind of a little bit unexpected. I would actually win with my Psychic Venoms and my Mana Shorts a lot. I also had a nice manipulator in there. So mm -hmm. I could always tap their land and hit them. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so much denial. So, and then, okay, so I also had um, a, uh, one of my Royal Assassins in there and a Nettling it. So there was all mm. these tiny little combos inside there. Uh -huh. And it was just like, it, I don't necessarily need to draw the actual cards all at the same time. It builds up over time, right? So if you get your Nettling Imp and your Royal, I make you attack, kill it. If you have a Sarah, use my Icy, kill it. Oh, I want your Sarah. I control it. Oh, you put Black Ice out up there. I'll take it. All these little things, all these tiny little things kind of worked really well together. Mm. Just you, all at the same time. Did you get a good placement with that deck at a tournament? I was getting first place quite a bit. Mm. And I came in third in the Dallas area for a little bit. That was cool. Oh, really? Yeah. I wonder if anybody watching this video would remember that. If any of you are watching this, that played against this deck in the Dallas area, I would love to hear that. Yeah, this is a comment. Yeah, but wait, this is the what really, really will screw you up. Okay, so okay. I played this versus my cousin Bob. He came down, I pulled out my tournament deck, and I said, uh -huh. okay, just throw any deck, throw anything that you want at it. Uh -huh. I was crushing every single thing that he was putting out there on the board. Uh -huh. He even had a stasis deck, crushed that too. Wow. I mean, it was pretty cool. But then again, he didn't have like turbo stasis or anything like that. So it was a completely different scenario. Yeah. Kismet was now and all that kind of stuff. But anyways, uh, but then uh, he made this really terrible deck. All Sorry. it had was three, three creatures. That's it. <laughs> nothing else. Absolutely nothing else. Except three, three creatures. He had draws, of course. Mm -hmm. But it was almost like every freaking round he put out a creature, and I can't <laughs> deal with that many things. Like, 3-3, three, 3-3, three, 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 three. And it would just overwhelm me. If I steal one of his creatures, it didn't really matter because he just put out another one. And eventually he was putting out two at a time. <laughs> I couldn't keep up with it. You know, there's there's a ancient story this reminds me of. It's, it's called the... Alexandrian solution to a Gregorian knot. <laughs> you ever heard about this? No. And we're just pulling things out of like craziness. Okay, so this is actually, this is kind of funny because your deck that you just described is very complicated. It has a lot of little like moving pieces it and did, stuff it like did. that. It did, it was great. So, it was so much fun. In the legend of Alexandrian solution to Gregorian knot, what happened was there was this, this, this challenge, and I don't know, hopefully I tell the story right. There's this challenge about this really complicated knot of like rope. And the, the trick was like, you needed to try to like figure out how to untie this knot. And so nobody could figure out how to like untie the knot, right? It was like a really good challenge. And then it's some, it was, you know, in Gregorian societies where this knot came from or something like that. But then there's uh, an Alexandrian that comes up and then the guy just whips out his sword and just, whoosh, just like slices right through the knot. And so technically it was a solution. It wasn't what they were intending but it actually solved the knot. And so that, that's kind of lived over the years since then is like sometimes when you can't 
fix a problem, you can just brute force your way through it with something that people weren't completely expecting. That's what I'm like thinking of when you're telling me about this all these three threes coming out and just destroying this oh, well tuned, finely. It was oiled just machine. like I couldn't believe this. <laughs> <laughs> well we played it several times because I figured I had to be able to beat it. I think yeah. I did beat it once, but it was just like insane. Wow. I know cousin he always brings it up. My cousin Bob always he does. brings it up. He's yeah. like, I'm not gonna let him forget that. Yeah, my nineteen ninety three <laughs> deck that was just super freakishly awesome. Ah. Just got smashed by this. I'm just gonna put three threes in a deck. So I notice also when we play sometimes, Mammoth, and I say Chimes. like, "What do you want to build?" You'll gravitate back towards that same type of deck, yeah. like blue, black, steal your stuff, beat you with it. Kind oh of stuff. yeah, I love it. I mean, yeah. give me some old mans and some unstables, and mm -hmm. then I could sacrifice it. To my, I mean, in Sorcerer's Queen, Sorcerer's Queen is great for taking your creatures and giving myself two life. It's so yeah. much good. And with all those tricks, I can definitely see why you would enjoy it because like. You don't win the same way every time. No. Like you have all no. these different ways that you, that you could win based on what you draw and what's in the game state, so it would constantly stay like a very fresh deck. Yeah. And I always liked winning with Psychic Venom and doing managers to people. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I lost to Psychic Venom? Yeah. <laughs> You're used to see people's expressions when they take their last two points of damage from it. <laughs> I mean, if. if Normally, people are wanting to disenchant something kind of bigger than that. <laughs> oh, I actually, that's a good point. I wonder if people sat there with a disenchant in hand, like, I'm not going to use it on Psychic Venom. I hate that card. It's crap. Yeah, exactly. And then they die to it, right? No, disenchant in hand. I don't even have to tap. I don't even have to tap my mana. I don't even know why you put that there. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever put it on the City of Brass and make him take three? Yeah. Oh, that. That was so fun. good. Yes. With the icy, that could totally happen. Oh yeah, it does. It does a lot. So um, the deck that I liked, that I, I just I have really fond memories of, and uh, I still play it actually sometimes because it's a vintage deck, so it's still technically allowed. Um, it's a deck uh, I termed Gifts Slaver, and it was a Control Slaver variant, and I built it like Rich Shea years ago. Uh, I, th I think he was the creator of the Control Slaver I don't archetype. Know. He created this Control Slaver deck in Vintage that would basically like recur Mind Slaver onto the table using like Goblin Welder and the, then the card called Mind Slaver from Mirrodin that would, make, that would allow you to control everything in your opponent's turn. And it would just completely wreck the board, board state. Like Mind Slaver goes off one time and the game is oftentimes going to just end. And so it was a very good deck and I loved that design. And so I jumped into that and I wanted to improve it and I spent like a while like refining it and I think then when I finally landed on these like two cards like the, the deck kicked it into another gear and then like one more card it went into a third gear and those the first two were Gifts Ungiven and Crucible of Worlds once I finally added those to the Control Slaver deck it just took it to a whole new level because the synergy of the deck and the combos that you could do just blew up and then the last thing was, like, there was so many variants that were played that were like red and blue and white and stuff. When I put that tiny splash of black in, and I used that to add Vampiric Tutor, Demonic Tutor, and Yawgmoth's Will, then the deck just went through the roof. And I played it at vintage tournaments and crushed people with it. It was a fantastic deck. And even today, you can bring it into a tournament and it actually does really well. I'd love to show you this deck sometime. All right. But the thing that I liked about it so much is like kind of like your build, you had all these different ways to win the game. Because when you can control slaver someone and you can do terrible things with their own cards against them, then that just opens things well up. I mean, you like, you know, you, they draw a bolt and they bolt themselves. They draw a fireball and they fireball themselves, right? You know, <laughs> that sounds like a fun deck. Yeah, they sack a bunch of fetch lands and find nothing. And then they pull them back out of their graveyard and then sack them again and still find nothing. I mean, you can just do all these fun ways to make them kill themselves. But then the deck also played Platinum Angel, and that was like my go-to. Like I loved having that in it because like, and it's, actually I should back up and say what I really liked about the deck is it had the ability to handle just about anything because it had the tools in the deck. And you had the ability to go get those tools. And having the ability to deal with nearly anything made it a deck that was good against nearly everything. And I really liked that aspect, you know, a deck that had the ability 
to at least go toe to toe with like nearly anything in the format. And that was one huge thing that I liked about it. And the second thing was just all the versatility. Like every game was different based on what you drew. And those gifts and given piles were very interesting. Because you know, you would look at the board state and you would cast gifts and it was like you really have to think about what you were going to go get as like your four cards to give to your opponent so he could pick two here and two there. So there was just there was massive complexity. It was good against everything. It was always like a fresh, new kind of like game, no matter how you were playing. And it's being vintage, I could keep playing this deck again for years and years and years. So I just loved that deck. And actually, you know what, guys? I made a video about this deck. We're going to link it right here because um, I went through and I showed how that deck actually played because I was so fond of it on, on my uh, Edmund Magic Engineer, Engineer channel. Yeah. So go watch it. What are you waiting <laughs> for? <laughs> so I'm actually curious to hear do you guys have a deck that hangs in your mind as like everybody has a deck there's okay. there's 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 if you're a I shouldn't have asked the question if you're a Magic the Gallery player you have a deck just put it down in the comments below I don't care if it's just burn I don't care if it's just land destruction I don't care if it's just a deck that beats Edwin that's 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 up to you it's valid Put your deck down there, and that's going to be awesome to you, and we want to know. We yeah, and I specifically it. also want to hear why you like that deck, because I'm sure there's a story attached, or there's some kind of cool moment that happened. Right, right like if you cast Howl from Beyond and kill Edwin with it. Well, after he just <laughs> told you that nobody plays Howl from Beyond. Wow. <laughs> that was a funny moment. That was nobody a hilarious plays that. moment. Then you're like, oh, that's funny, because you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that interesting? <laughs> you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks a lot for uh, joining the channel and uh, guys be sure to click the like button and ring that bell ding all right we got this yep okay right. we're yeah. gonna go build snowmen okay bye snowmen we're in florida <laughs> oh yeah that's right